നമസ്കാർ ആൻഡ് വെൽക്കം ടു യെറ്റ് അനദർ എപ്പിസോഡ് ഓഫ് ഡയബറ്റിക് കെയർ ഇന്ത്യ ഇറ്റ്സ് എ വെരി മെമ്മറബിൾ ഇയർ ഫോർ ഓൾ ഓഫ് എസ് ഹു ടോക്ക് ഓഫ് ഡയബറ്റീസ് ആൻഡ് ഹു ഡീൽ വിത്ത് ഡയബറ്റീസ് വൈ ഇസ് ഇറ്റ് സോ thinking of diabetes you could divide the treatment into two eras two well delineated time frames the age before insulin that's the pre insulin era and the age after insulin that is the post insulin era insulin would be the defining thing over here why would that be let's look at the history of insulin for a few minutes prior to the discovery of insulin in 1921 a person with type 1 diabetes type 1 diabetes is the sit with the, the condition where the body is not able to produce any insulin at all so prior to the discovery of insulin in 1921 a person afflicted with type 1 diabetes was almost 100% sure of death premature death the moment type 1 diabetes was diagnosed he or she would start losing weight and then the body would waste away and then death would come very painfully so a terrible end awaited people afflicted with type 1 diabetes and then the world changed in 1921 when a group of scientists we call them banting best and uh, macleod and colip when this team of scientists in the university of toronto canada they discovered insulin and they extracted insulin and used it in a young boy who was down with type 1 diabetes and was counting his days his last days death was imminent and that was the time when they tried the insulin injection on him and lo and behold in just a few days he started putting on weight and then he became a young handsome boy that was the miraculous power of insulin since then insulin has saved millions of lives throughout the world and it continues doing so so here we stand at the cusp of history 100 years of insulin we are celebrating the centenary celebrations and we have great pleasure in inviting one and all to these worldwide celebrations so what we have covid around let's not bother about that much let's look at the beauty of this molecule known as insulin is it a medicine of course not it's a hormone that is normally produced by each and every one of us so well we couldn't count it as a medicine right but when your body is not able to produce enough insulin or if the insulin is not able to act properly then you have a condition of high blood sugars high blood glucose to be more precise and that is what is diabetes i'm sure you are aware of that so when insulin was discovered way back in 1921 exactly one century from now all right it used to be given with the use of syringes and i'm playing around with the syringe right now so this is the insulin syringe i'm sure many of you would have seen this you are familiar with this uh, fairly old fashioned now not many people use this but uh, still in the rural regions of india this is very commonly used so you need you get this insulin in a small bottle which is called a vial uh, and it contains 
standard is 10 ml of insulin. Uh, using this syringe, you need to pull out the right dosage and then you inject it into your body. That's how it's done. Hmm. And then over the years, the pen gradually gave way, I'm sorry, the syringe gradually way, gave way to the insulin pen. So this is a uh, typical insulin pen. I'm sure many of you are familiar with uh, an insulin pen as well. It's very commonly used nowadays. So the problem with the syringe was that you needed to um, take the vial and then pierce the vial and pull out the right dose of insulin. So a bit cumbersome, isn't it? But this would be very simple to use. Even a small child would be able to use it very easily. And people uh, who are not able to see properly, whose vision is bad, even they would be able to use it because of the click mechanism, the clicking mechanism of the insulin pen. You can hear the clicking mechanism. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. See, look at that. Yeah. So um, that was a big advantage and it contains uh, a cartridge with insulin inside. So the dosing would be perfect and uh, they can carry it around. Very convenient too. And the prices have fallen considerably. And most of the uh, leading uh, formulations of insulin are available as insulin cartridges, which can be used with a variety of pens. So this is the next device that came after the syringe. So the syringe came first and then you have the insulin pens. And then over the years, several other devices have been tried out. In the meanwhile, scientists tried to come out with other uh, mechanisms of insulin delivery. For instance, there were insulin sprays available at one point of time, which you could spray into your nose or into your mouth and uh, it would start working. It would get absorbed through the mucous membrane and start working, but they didn't click. And so much so that today we don't have any of those devices available. So after the syringe came the pen, as I told you, and after that you have the insulin pumps available. But uh, they are being used in only a very tiny percentage of uh, patients. We don't use insulin pumps because of the cost involved. Um, it's used only in a small category of patients. The next big, big thing with regard to insulin delivery would be what is called the in-pen device. In-pen stands for insulin pen. Uh, it is a, a pen which is almost like this. And uh, now comes the beauty. The needle of this particular pen has a sensor in it. So the moment you plunge the needle into your body, the sensor measures the glucose level at that particular point of time and sends it sends that particular uh, measurement to the uh, chip that is in the pen which calculates the dose of insulin that is required for that prevailing glucose level so that's a beauty so uh, that does away with the problem of the patient needing to calculate the insulin dose nowadays what happens is you measure your glucose level using a glucometer and then you will have to calculate the amount of insulin that you require that might be tricky in certain uh, for certain patients right so this in pen does away with this problem it measures the glucose level and also measures the amount of glucose uh, the insulin that is required for that particular glucose level and injects it so uh, that's going to be the next big thing it's coming up it's not uh, come to our country yet FDA has approved it recently. FDA is in the US, so it has been approved out there. And in a few months, we hope to have it here. So that's the next big thing. But why do we need a century old molecule here? Don't we have enough and more medicines available for treating diabetes, whatever type it is? We have a lot of medications available, don't we? Yes, true. But insulin is here to stay. Insulin isn't going anywhere. So what makes insulin different? A lot of it. One, insulin is perhaps the only uh, medication which doesn't have an upper limit. In other words, um, it is the only one which doesn't have a maximum recommended dosage. You are justified in 
giving as many units of insulin as you want to bring the blood sugar levels under control without causing hypoglycemia. So that's something that you don't get to see with any other medication, right? All medications do have an upper recommended limit, which you are not supposed to cross. That doesn't hold good to insulin. So that's one beauty. Two, insulin can be given in any st stage of diabetes with any complication in any age. So you have a kid, uh, you, can give you can give insulin. You have a kid with diabetes, with complications, you can give insulin. You have a pregnant woman uh, with uh, diabetes, you can give insulin. You have an elderly senior citizen with uh, diabetes, again, you can give insulin. So insulin can be given at any stage and any age of uh, diabetes. That's not a problem at all. If the patient is in hospital, whether he's going to be uh, operated upon, whether he has already been operated upon, whether he is in the ICU or in the ward, again, you can give insulin. If there is sepsis, no other medications can be given but insulin. So this is some uh, something that you don't get to see, the sort of flexibility you don't get to see with any other medications. And then you can start insulin today morning and end it today evening. If you don't feel like taking it tomorrow, if you feel you can do away with it, you can. So you can take it for a day, you can take it for a week, for a month or even a year. Doesn't matter. So this sort of flexibility again, you don't see with anything. Still, we, many, many, many of us are scared of insulin, aren't we? We wrongly believe that uh, once on insulin, always on insulin. And then there are many other misconceptions, as if insulin is a death sentence. No, insulin is not a death sentence like type 1 diabetes used to be before insulin was discovered. That was a death sentence, not insulin. Insulin is never a death sentence. It is the most beautiful, have more studies and more research and a lot of innovative devices coming up that can make administration of insulin more convenient and comfortable and pleasurable to our patients. So uh, we hope this INPEN which is coming up will, will revolutionize insulin. And newer formulations of insulin are coming up, newer formulations. Yes, the it's, it's an overcrowded market out there, a lot of formulations already present, but newer ones are coming. So it just shows that insulin is not going anywhere. If someone thought, all right, we have been playing around with it for 100 years. Let's forget it. It's an oldie. No, it's not an oldie. It's such a beautiful molecule. Yeah, so uh, I and my team in Diabetic Care India, we hope this episode on insulin and its centenary celebrations would have helped at least some of you get rid of those misconceptions and anxieties and apprehensions that you had about insulin. And uh, we hope that we will look at insulin, that all of you will look at, start looking at insulin in a different perspective, right? And uh, we sincerely hope you liked this episode. If you did, please press the like button and do share this video without fail and of course smash the notification icon that's the bell icon out there all right uh, if we are encouraged by the response to this video we are going to come up with more and more videos in english which you can then share with your friends and relatives who might not be conversant with malayalam thanks a lot for watching we love you all. We are going to come back with newer topics and newer episodes on diabetes. Namaste.